Hi there, I'm Katie Godbeer and welcome to another episode of In The Studio. Today I'm going to be joined by Becky James, who's going to show us how to create mixed media stenciling using an X-cut die. Hi Becky, welcome along. Hi Katie. <laughs> Looks like we're going to be creating quite the work of art today. We are going to definitely be doing some artistic kind of techniques in this one. I'm going to be um, showing you a lovely dye that we've made the stencil from and then I'm going to work you, I'm going to work through the, the actual step-by-step -step techniques to, to create this. Building up this wonderful, colourful creation. It's fantastic. Yeah. Right, so what's first? Right, well, <clears throat> Let's just talk about a little bit about the dye that we've got. So we've got this dye, which is um, a beautiful sort of laser cut effect uh, floral dye. Um, and it, I mean, there's so much detail in here. We can actually see it here because I've cut it, it to use it as my stencil. Oh, it's a floral filigree background. background. Yes, and it certainly is. Um, actually, let's just hold this up against the, the black card that we're going to be using so that you can see all the detail there and all these little bits that are cut out. It's absolutely fabulous. Amazing. And it was because when I actually first saw it, the first thing that sprung to mind was this would make the perfect stencil. Yeah. And you don't need anything sort of complicated to make the stencil. All I've done is I've die cut it from some paper made in oh, textured card. Perfect. So really, really easy to I do. I really like that it has a border as well. So if yes. you want to pop that, I mean, if you just die cut it, you, yes. can, you can just pop it straight on the front of a, um, an A5 card and it'll be perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you need your express, don't you, to cut yes. this? Yes, um, you do. Because it's got the bigger size plates, the that's other it. plates, isn't it? So it's perfect for yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. Lovely. So what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the card to do the stenciling. And what I've got here is some a roll of pattern craft tape. And we're going to use this and just go along one edge because what's quite nice about this technique as well is that if you hit sort of hinge, hinge the stencil, you can lift it up and see how it's getting on and how it's looking and if there's any bits that you've missed. Oh, that's good. And that sort of thing. Because when you start adding the colours, one thing is that you'll suddenly find that you can't see where the, what the actual original <laughs> colour was underneath because it's going to blend yeah, in. Yeah, it's all going to blend in. So what I, I like to do is start off with a really bright colour and I'm going to start off with um, yellow. This one is called Golden Sun and it's a really nice, slightly orangey yellow, but it's, it's okay. really beautiful. Now it's entirely up to you, but when I put this together what I did was I chose a colour for each style of flower and then okay. blended the background the background bits but it's up to you you can be completely random okay and I like if you can just see I'm actually bending the foam as I'm as I'm applying see, it yeah. and that makes it much I've got a smaller space here and it makes it much easier for me to control it okay and all I'm going to do is basically dab into the flowers now there's one on here it doesn't matter if you go around the outside by the way so don't worry if you do that but there's one on here which is like um a lovely sunflower so uh, a daisy sunflower so i've chosen to do those ones oh, in the yellow okay. and i'm just working my way around it's much easier i find if i work with one color first and then move on yeah so just work your way up and this is why i like to put it on a hinge and i'll show you why in a second <sighs> Because I can now look at that and I can see exactly where my flowers are. Oh, yes. But as I'm going along and I'm, I'm building this up, it actually allows me to see where I've got, where I've missed colours and things like uh, that. Okay. And I'll just add one more colour so that you can just see then how it works. Now, there are on here these little daisy shapes. So I've chosen to do those in a pink. That's lovely. And the other flower, there is one other very definite flower and that one I've chosen to do in a blue so you'll actually see that in a blue later on but again just working my way through so like so ah, can you yes. see and you can also start to see it, it's not evident because we've only gone so far here but some of the negative because some of the flowers that are on it will look like black silhouettes okay and we're going to do something a little bit later to pull those out as individual flowers but you can start to see some of the backgrounds as well coming through so if I move that one on, okay. and this one, as you can see, fully laden with colour. Beautiful. Um, and actually, do you know what? You could add that onto your own. Yeah, you onto don't want to card throw that away. Well. That looks fantastic. Um, but these stencils, even out of card, this will last you quite a while. I think yeah. this one's done about three or four versions oh, of this so well, far, yeah. you know, and it's still still very strong. Yeah. But if I if I open this up now, you can see the whole of the pattern. 
So you can see some of those negative flowers that have come through. Yeah. They're, they're black, whereas um, you've actually got the outlines of the other flowers we saw, like the sunflower and the, the daisy and the colours are in there. So what we're going to do next is I've chosen a few colours which contrast with the main flowers. So with that daisy, with the sunflowery one, and there's also this little blue, blue okay. flower as well. And we're going to use those to actually blend in a colour so that it starts to add tone and shade. Uh, okay. This one is called Wild Violet. Oh. So all I'm going to do now is pick up a little bit of that, tap that off again. It's a lovely you can imagine colour, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's really beautiful. It's a really deep um, oh, mauvey purple, mm. if you know what I mean. It's not a, it's not a, a purple purple. Yeah. It's, it's really beautiful. And it contrasts really well with that lagoon colour. So what I'm going to do is, I have got one of the blue flowers here, and I'm basically very gently going to go over it. So it just adds a hint of the colour okay. to the centres. Now, with the pink, I'm not going to do the pink one on here, because otherwise... You're getting the effect really with what I'm showing you with this blue. But with the pink, I actually chose a uh, raspberry, which Ooh. is a beautiful red, a really deep, no, it's red, but it's got that pink tinge mm -hmm. to it rather than being a, a, a bold yeah. red, a scarlet red. Let's add a bit of this uh, into places as well. And it's, with this, I'm only adding little bits. I'm not adding quite so much as I did with the other colours that I used. Like you say, it's about sort of building up gradually. And like, Indeed. obviously, with your hinge, you can yeah. then have a little look yeah. to see how you're getting on. Oh, yes. And if you can see, Katie, you just yeah. get that hint. Uh, if we should, that you get fantastic. that hint of colour in the centre of the flowers. Beautiful. Now, the final one that I added, and you'll be able to see in a second uh, the colour, um, the, the whole of this finish, because I've got a finished one as well is one called pumpkin and this is a really vibrant orange and i have to tell you i don't know the artistic reasons why what happens happens um because i'm not a trained artist but all i know is that the minute you add this it just brings the whole thing to life yeah and it's the one that i've added last so this one i'm using to add the highlights to those sunflowers oh, okay because it adds a slightly orangey feel to it but also, the minute you add this to um, to the background as well, through the rest of the stencil, it's almost like it brings it to light. It's 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 like somebody's just turned the sunshine on and yeah. brought the colours out. And if I just the orange just brings it so completely to life. That's stunning. So. It's really, really beautiful. Fantastic. Now, I do have one that's, we'll leave that one to dry, and I have one that's finished here. And there's one, there's a couple of things that I want to do to this. Now, for my card, what I did was I chopped it to the size that I wanted it okay. to and worked on that. But a couple of things. First of all, we've got the negative flowers, which we talked about in the mm -hmm. original uh, stencil. So to give them a centre and actually sort of define them, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of our adhesive gems. Ah. And actually, this will take some of the large 5mm ones. Okay. And I'll be really honest with you, you might find as you're doing the next step that you've missed one out and then you just have to go back and add a, yeah. add a little gem into the centre. So there we go. But you can see, and that starts to give you that bit of sparkle Lovely. that we had on there. And then the final little step, and this is where the whole thing comes together, is we're going to use a white gel pen. Ah. And we're going to draw in details and highlights. And I promise you, the minute you do this, the whole thing changes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I actually, I'm going to start with one of the daisy flowers here. And I've, I've, when I've done it, I've treated each one the same, a bit like I chose the same colour for each okay. style of flower. So for this one, I'm going to add a centre highlight with my white gel pen and some little dots around the centre and actually it's quite therapeutic just doing this and then some little highlights. A bit of doodling is always really exactly fun isn't it? That's exactly what it is, it's just adding a bit of doodling and then if you add details as well to those negative flowers, again, it helps to define them. It really is giving it so a 3D quality, hasn't you, it? Yeah, if you can just see this area here as opposed to the rest of it, which is lovely and beautiful and coloured, but it's just 
makes them pop. It yeah. gives them depth. It gives. It just brings them to it life. Looked, I mean, two minutes ago, it looked beautiful and dimensional, but now they sort of almost look flat, don't they, compared yeah. to these ones? Yes, exactly. And some of them, you might want to... The blue one, I what I've done with that one is I've actually added some little scallop details around the outside just to match the centre. Oh, and, yeah. and it makes the flower bigger because there's that... There's that black bit around the outside. Lovely. So there you go. And of course, you then just carry on until so you fill the whole fill, until you fill the whole piece that you're working with. Beautiful. Now on this one, I've chosen to matte and layer it onto green because I love apple greeny kind of colours. Now, what colour you choose to matte and layer it on is going to bring out very different colours in this yeah. in this uh, design in this piece of artwork. So if I chose like a red or a pink, it's going to make those pinky colours and those purpley colours pop. Definitely. Um, but having chosen a green, what you, the colours that really pop are the citrusy colours, yeah. the green, the oranges. So when you're putting it together, play around with what colour, put a piece of card underneath and see which colours you prefer yeah. and which colours and what difference it makes. And green's always pop. a good choice with flowers generally, isn't it? It is, it's the absolutely. Perfect sort of leafy shade to go alongside. It is. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for showing us that project. That's pleasure. fantastic. What a brilliant technique. I hope you've enjoyed Becky's beautiful background technique and you've enjoyed discovering your inner artist. If you've been inspired to get out your paints and get a little bit messy, why not upload your project to docrafts.com? We'd love to come along and have a look at your projects. I'm sure the rest of the community there would too. We'd also love to see your projects on Facebook. Why not upload them to our page and we can take a look at them. If you'd like to leave us a comment to let us know what you think of In The Studio, maybe you've got an idea for an upcoming episode, why not let us know? Until next time, happy crafting. Yeah.